All right, guys, so first up here on uh, the Zelda Dungeon podcast, we have Colonel Majora, our current champion going into the Keaton Quiz, and he's going to talk to us about his favorite Zelda games. You know, Colonel's been first up on the last, like, three podcasts. Why is that? I don't know, Din. You're in charge of the order. Maybe just because he sends us good segments. Maybe. Take it away, Colonel. Well, hi there, Dungeon Divers. This is Colonel Major again for more on Legendary Reflections. And what have I been reflecting on recently? Well, the old Zelda games. Like, really old. Like, like Super NES ages. And, man, it's been a great nostalgic fun. And for the heck of it, I looked up a few old TV commercials for a bunch of old Zelda games. And with YouTube being YouTube, those trailers led me to many more trailers. Like ones for even the newer games in the series. And one of them stuck out for me and gave me an idea. Do you remember the first trailer for Zelda Skyward Sword? The one at E3 in 2010? Well, at the very start of it, there were four images shown before we saw the newly designed Link. There was Ocarina of Time's Link and Epona, Majora's Masks, Majora's Mask, <laughs> uh, Wind Waker's King of Red Lions, and Twilight Princess's Wolf Link. Clearly, this is an homage to past 3D Zelda games. Everyone saw these things and instantly got images in their mind of playing each one of them and seeing how different they were from one another, and things that connected them um, connected them together. <laughs> But the thing that stuck out in my mind was the various things each game brought to the table that had never been done before in the series or any other series, really. And I'm here to discuss those things. I want to pay tribute to the games that brought Zelda to the third dimension, my favorite games in the series. So let's get started. First off, Ocarina of Time, obviously. This is my favorite game in the whole series, mainly due to the GameCube's Master Quest version. But I also think it is what could be called the best game in the series, if not the best game ever. And yes, I know there is a difference between favorite and best. Honestly, I think that most of the hype the game originally got was because of its perfect timing. I mean, it came out a whopping five years after uh, Link's Awakening. And between those, these two games' releases were the wretched CDI games' releases. And so people were waiting for something big, something good. <laughs> and so Nintendo was forced to bring the series into the 3D world. But that's just it. Its content, its, its content truly deserves its place in the fans' hearts. It's not a 3D Zelda. It's the 3D Zelda. Uh... It started what would become a signature style in the series from that day forward. It brought in things like targeting, variable sword handling, and musical en elements that fans like us could only dream of. Ocarina of Time was the true 3D Zelda game. It may not be everyone's favorite, but it's arguably the best. And not long after Ocarina of Time's release was its odd and, well, very unique sequel... Majora's Mask. The thing about Majora's Mask is it had everything that Ocarina of Time didn't. If there were one full game, that game would easily be the most complete game in the series, if not in history. Ocarina of Time was more about general exp exploration excuse me, of a massive, slightly cheerful world. But Majora's Mask was a smaller world with incredible detail and hugely broken lives. It paved the way for just that detail and emotion. Games like Wind Waker and Skyward Sword have loads and loads of side quests and secrets that don't need completion, but add hours and hours of gameplay that may not that you may not even know is there at first. And games like say, well, again, Skyward Sword, well, their plot can be extremely emotional and stimulate the emotions of the player enough to make them really feel like they're part of the Zelda world. This is at least partially thanks to the influence of Majora's Mask's content. And if you've not played this game, but you've played many others at 3D Zeldas, you don't even know what to expect. Trust me. Anyway, on to a slightly happier game. 
the one that's the big surprise of the series, The Wind Waker. It was a big shocker for the people who were at the Sp Space World Expo more than 10 years ago. The Zelda GameCube tech demo was shown with an Ocarina of Time like Link and Ganondorf, and no one, so no one expected to see the style that Wind Waker brought us. A lot of people hated Wind Waker just for the way it looked, but <laughs> I always found it unfair. I mean, Wind Waker is, an, is another game in the series that, if given, say, Twilight Princess graphics, a lot of people would simply change their mind and love it. What this game brought us is a true showing of how people focus, a lot of people focus way too much on graphics and just overall look. I've always looked at five things in games. Gameplay, then controls, then music, then plot, if that's something that's involved in the game, and then graphics. I mean, would you rather play the ugliest, most fun game ever? Or most beautiful, but most boring game ever? Well, anyway, Wind Waker. It also showed us that how that the series can be super, super varied, and how utterly surprising Zelda can be. Zelda will always be in our hearts, but it will also never cease to shock us in the greatest way possible. For all ages and for all fans, that's what Zelda really is. But this went for all the young folk, mostly. Um, so what was for the older folk? Well, what else? Twilight Princess. Uh, back before Twilight Princess, Twilight Princess's release, excuse me, um, I was absolutely grieving at the sight of Nintendo Power's ma Nintendo Power Magazine's pages telling me that Twilight Princess was for Wii. I did not know it was originally meant for GameCube. Once I read about that, that, I was super excited. I mean, I didn't have a Wii at the time. But nonetheless, um, I could see that gamers used to classic button mashing or ones who like modern motion control could really get into the game. And the new graphics and monsters let more mature people uh, like the game even more. While keeping the fantasy dynamic that all ages and all people love. Games like Twilight Princess are ones that apply to much wider audiences. And it's easily one of the best games in the entire series to call truly epic. And it's also one that can that you can hand to any adventure lover and say, here, you're gonna like it. And finally, we have Skyward Sword, the game that's given us the origins of this amazing series. Things are certainly different this time around. Skyward Sword is sta your standard half throwback, half new style game. Uh, we get the old, good old formula of running around in third person view, slicing up monsters, solving puzzles, collecting items, and saving the girl. Only this time around, they've added a whole load of new elements while still using elements of old Zeldas. We get plot as gripping as Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. We get as much detail as, again, Majora's Mask. Gameplay similar to Twilight Princess. Graphics like Wind Waker's. And certain little things that even remind us of the 2D games in a way that none of us can seem to find the words for. This Zelda installment makes it so that every way of controls that Nintendo has offered has been used in Zelda. From controllers, to portability, to touch screens, to motion control, to one-to-one -to -one motion control... Man, it just goes on. The old 3D games brought us great methods of adventuring, and now Skyward Sword has brought that all back to our minds and more. I've already gone through it, and I can tell from how awesome it is that I'm not the only one who thinks so. You guys gotta play this. Ocarina of Time is still my favorite, but next to that, Skyward Sword beats them all. In closing, I honestly like the 3D Zeldas more than the 2D ones, but that doesn't mean I dislike the 2D ones. They pretty much reside in the hearts of anyone who's played through them, but, but the 3D Zeldas, I find, have innovated much more per game. I hope to see much more of both types in the future. But do you? Let me know. Let me know what you guys think. What have you guys seen in a 3D Zelda game that is unique from all the others? Wh and what has the series, 3D series done that the 2D series hasn't? And what hasn't been done in the 3D games that you think should? 
Send me all your answer, awesome answers to colonelmajora at gmail.com. That's C-O-L-O-N-E-L-M-A-J-O-R-A at gmail.com. If anyone listening has not played any of the 3D Zeldas, <laughs> you got to try them out. They're awesome. And if you have, play them all over again and watch for things that you haven't seen in any other game in the series. And let me know what you think is interesting. You may like what you find. Anyway, Din and Rish, back to you guys. What do you two think should be added to the future 3D Zelda games? Thanks so much for your segment, Colonel Majora. And what would we want to see that's not in anything else? I would want to see the ability to find items out in the world, which you do already, but it goes towards improving and building your home, which then in turn would be what say, grants you better abilities or grants you a stronger sword or something. Like, you would upgrade a room in your home almost. Kind of Minecraft-ish. <laughs> it just kind of popped into my head there. I would want to see more advancements in stealth. Um, Link is kind of a running there and hack and slash everybody that you can. Um, now, with Skyward Sword, hack and slash with finesse and accuracy. But, um... <laughs> I would like to see some stealth elements. So like Thief? Just kind of sneak up and stab him in the back or knock him out or something and like assassin hide him in the bushes? Like Assassin's Creed was what I was thinking, but yes. Less wrist blade. No, I love the wrist blade! Less wrist blade. More wrist blade! Anyways, we're going to move on. <laughs> 